Once the UFC came around in the early 90s, prosciutto artists everywhere started to take a massive dump in their pants. You see, up until that point, there were many jokers who had passed themselves off as legitimate deadly practitioners of various martial arts. the elite of the elite in a world where there was no internet and it was difficult to call people on their bullshit from the other side of the planet. Then the 90s rolled around, big ass jackets, Michael Jackson and his moonwalk, prior to the child diddling stuff. Allegedly, allegedly, that's ignorant. Mike Tyson knocking everyone out, prior to the whole ear biting and woman diddling stuff. And I'm just ferocious, I want your heart, I want to eat his children, praise be to Allah. And when movies were awesome and the western world wasn't pushing, as the drinker would say, THE MESSAGE. Then Hoist Gracie came onto the scene and started submitting monstrous men that made him look like Hasbullah by comparison. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu, wrestling and MMA started gaining momentum and the charlatans who had ruled the decades prior were on the run. Before all this happened though, there were three knobheads vying for the prestigious official Bushido Artist Awards affectionately known by nobody as the Oba'a. Today, we're going to look at three delusional dickheads and officially crown one of them the Grand Master of Bullshito. Before we continue, I will give you a moment to click on the comments and put in your prediction for the top three ninjidiot nominees and the lucky winner. Yeah, buddy! While you are inadvertently tickling the algorithm with your comment, well, You guys are legends! If you find this kind of brilliant production and life-changing content worthy, please consider liking and subscribing. Studies show the only people that don't subscribe and like are puppy and kitten hating psychopaths. And that's not you, is it? I'm Steven Seagal and uh... Can I laugh in your face? Alright, now a quick merch plug with Steven Seagal singing vocals for me because he is a legend. Our first nominee is one of the OG Ninja Masters, Ashida Kim. Kim was raised by a pack of wolves in the deep jungles of the Congo before he was abducted and adopted by a clan of ninjas living in America. Kimmy Boy was trained in many ancient techniques and was happy to teach people the ways of the ninja. It's a special type of person who is open to this type of training. These individuals buy gift cards to pay fines because an Indian bloke called Steve Hi, this call is from US Customs and Border Protection from Border Patrol told them to. They also drive in cars with masks on, completely alone. I guess we're all equipped with different CPUs. I ain't got a good, good, good brain. Kim was a no-nonsense ninja. Somebody attacks you. You stick your finger in their eyes. And you shake their head back and forth and you rattle their brain. Look at the conviction and primal rage in his eyes. I mean, I'm already convinced. But it can't hurt to see these techniques in action. As I suspected, totally legit. Legitu! Some of you out there might be a little more skeptical, but I think we can bring you around. Ninjas are known for being stealthy, and Kim teaches us the real world applications of ninjutsu. If you're a creepy stalker and need to enter a house undetected, we can help you out. Just put on a mask and use the front door. I'm very familiar, very familiar. Use your amazing camouflage skills to disguise yourself while your target gets into bed. Take advantage of every possible object, natural and man-made, to conceal yourself from the enemy. It is this ability to hide oneself completely that gives rise to the legend that ninja can become invisible at will. When you're ready to attack, after going through painful efforts to remain stealthy, Exit from your place of hiding and turn on a torch before approaching your target. Why? 
I must be a dumb mother or something. Everything seems above board so far. Nijitsu! Perhaps you need to snatch a birthday from an aerial position. Fear not. Ashida Kim has what you need. Look at the speed, grace, and fluidity of his movement. Notice a target holding a crossbow because who needs automatic weapons when you have a crossbow? When dispatched, drag your target away and proceed to have your way with them. Some other noteworthy techniques include the ability to dodge bullets and catch bullets. Levitation can be achieved through a strict regime of bullshit and when is enabling your insanity. This dipshit assistant proves, with his flawless hula hoop work, that Ninja Master Kim is indeed floating using the power of delusion. What the fing idiot? I'm a loser, baby, so why don't you kill me? Our second nominee is the one and only Frank Dukes. My name is Frank William Dukes. That will make you Frank Dukes. No, no, no. It's Dukes. Gotcha. Like, put up your Dukes, right? Not only was he full of shit about being a deadly ninja, but he was also another stolen valor jerk, like our third nominee. Dukes was particularly fond of passing himself off as a lethal weapon on legs. His fist and feet were deadly weapons, and it's rumored he once punched a diamond and shattered into a thousand pieces. Ninjutsu! After all, he was the person that introduced Dim Muck to the masses. What the hell is a Dimac? Death touch. The ability to hit someone, leave no bruise, no mark whatsoever, and yet kill them or let them die hours later. You may remember this awesome version of the Dimac from our man, JCVD. However, there can only be one true master of the Dim Nuck, and we all know who that is, Watermelon Wally. So the idea of Dim Nuck, or any kind of internal technique, is not to hurt others, but to help others. Or you can go internal. As he got older, Frank downgraded from breaking fake bricks to breaking other random objects. First, he wastes a perfectly good bottle of alcohol. <laughs> Okay, it's probably not real alcohol inside that definitely not real bottle that he just smashed, but still. Next up, it's two champagne bottles about to fill the wrath of Dukes. Like put up your Dukes, right? It must be real because nobody, and I mean nobody, seems concerned about cutting their hands in the process. I want you to shut the fuck up. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but why is there no glass anywhere? and why aren't his feet torn to shreds from the glass that should be all over the floor? I mean, obviously I'm a dickhead for overanalyzing this, but I mean, come on. Dickhead. Francois Dukes then became the first and only man to punch right through bulletproof glass, or some sort of hard plastic. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and call it bulletproof glass. Contradicting yourself is a fundamental core of being a bullshito master. Watch as he completely changes what he said within the space of one minute. All I have to do is he, is he throws out, is he just mirror what he's doing? It'll go right by me. 12 seconds later. But in that one move, as he throws, I just step out, he's gonna miss me. That's all I need to know. The most amazing thing about Dukes is that he managed to get Hollywood to make a movie about his bull antics in a fictional tournament he took part in called the Kumite. You probably know it best by the movie uh, Bloodsport. The secret martial arts contest called the Kumite. That sounds like a cool idea for a movie. It's based on this guy named Frank Dukes. Being the only person who punched through bulletproof glass. <laughs> And the formulas I created, and I helped to teach the U.S. Navy SEALs. He was into special operations, and most particularly was the CIA. We're gonna make a great film together. Let's do it. That was when Frank really started, um, he really started going off the deep end a bit. You know, it's, no one likes to be lied about. He couldn't verify 
anything any more than he did. You know, you can keep a lie going for a year, two years, three years. Try to keep something going for a lifetime. You know, that's, it just ain't happen. Bloodsport, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, was a goddamn classic and I don't give a shit what anyone says. The fact that it's based on a lying piece of shit telling a nonsense story changes nothing. You're the best, Jean-Claude. I'm okay. Sensei Jiggly inspired a generation of people to defend themselves against attackers who grabbed their wrists. Founder of Aikido at 87, being held this way could do that. All right, but what is the purpose? No one's, if somebody's gonna mug you, nobody's gonna go like this. <laughs> oh yeah? He also encourages people to disregard law and order. I don't care no. about the law. Sever the brain stems of anyone you want. Hit you in the eyes like this on the way down. I'll hit you here, by the time you're down here, look what's exposed. Ooh, oh. Yeah. It's your brainstem. And sit down frequently. Okay, then we're gonna have to... Okay, okay, yeah, yeah let's sit down. No, no. let's take a break. Yes, yeah. okay. He was so gifted at Aikido that he didn't need to worry about pesky rankings, grading, or even the damn truth. What are your memories of meeting Steven Seagal? The first time I saw him was in Japan for the Kami Ibaraki, and it was a bit strange because he was the only one dressed in a traditional kimono. He was thin and tall at that time. I like how he takes a dig at Zagal being fat now. He was a stranger, nobody knew him. He was there claiming the fifth Dan, even though he was only the first Dan at that time. So it was a bit strange for us. Was he breaking a tradition? Yes, he did. I think he was already an actor. Maybe a little megalomaniacal. Sensei Floppy Disk was infamous for hosting group tickle fights and good old-fashioned wrestling. He didn't even care so much in the randori if you even did a technique. He didn't care what it was you had to do. Whatever it was, as far as he was concerned, that was it. I don't know what this is, but hey, I am mesmerized and impressed. It's outrageous. I think it's a joke. It's disgusting. Here he is taking down multiple attackers who run right at him with their arms outstretched, as people do in the real world. Waddled away, waddle, waddle. Then he waddled away, waddle, waddle. Then he waddled away, waddle, waddle. After being completely bored when making his first movie, he then went on to become a huge movie star in Hollywood and miraculously grow his hair back. Hello Australia, it's me, Steven Seagal. That's right, Steven Seagal. He also became a Serbian and Russian citizen, munitions and explosions expert, as well as an agricultural god specializing in carrots and watermelons. Big Papa also taught Jimi Hendrix how to play guitar and trained the Kansas City Chiefs to Super Bowl glory this year. And now, the inaugural Bushido Artist Award for the title of Grand Bushido Master is... Big Daddy Rumpsteak Steven Seagal. It's all right. Thank you for being interested in what we're doing here and... Um, I love the f out of cookies. Where Frank Dukes managed to fool Hollywood into making a movie about him, Big Papa Potbelly managed to convince Hollywood to put him in the movies and make him a star. For years, he fooled everyone into thinking he was a badass Hollywood tough guy when he was really just a fraudulent bully. Anybody seen Richie? Huh? And for that, he deserves to be recognized as the ultimate Bushido master. Oh, thank you for noticing that. Well, my friends, what do you think? Is Sensei Saggy Boobs the rightful Grand Bullshito Master? If you're interested in seeing more about the grand scope of Bullshito artists, including the No Touch Masters, let me know in the comments and I'll whip up a video destroying all of these morons. I will fuck you up! There will be a new movie review coming up soon, as well as a video highlighting Big Belly Seagal's guitar prowess. I encourage all guitar aficionados to keep an eye out for that one. We will definitely need your expertise on that matter. A new guide to episode also in the works. But until then, my friends, go outside and enjoy some fresh air. Say hello to the person that you walk past. And above all, stay awesome. Peace, legends. <laughs>